and probably now it's time for uh, next <laughs> and the next speaker it is uh, professor uh, arab bose from uh, indian statistical institute from kolkata kolkata and his research interest is covering economics econometrics probabilities and statistics and all this uh, interest is based on some stochastic let's say problems and uh, what is interesting I'm finding it is high dimensional data that we both with Dietrich we are interested in also partially and uh, Professor Bose will present us a very hot topic on COVID-19 uh, sorry <laughs> 19, 19 and uh, his uh, talk will be about modeling of uh, of uh, this virus uh, uh, development and uh, as, as we can see he will propose us an epidemiological model using adaptive dynamics recompartment uh, model and uh, I would like to ask Dr. Bose to start his presentation. Professor Bose, screen is yours. Please start. So uh, today I want to uh, talk on COVID, which has been in our lives for last uh, nine months or so. And uh, this is joint work with uh, Professor Modichanda Bhattacharji from University of Hyderabad. And here's a quick outline of my talk. I'll briefly describe for some of you in the audience, you have heard the, the terms SIR models or reproduction number, and but some of you may not be quite uh, aware of uh, exactly what these are. So I'll sp spend some uh, brief uh, amount of time on these two ideas uh, or, or uh, which are already known very well known in the uh, epidemiology literature. Then I'll talk about how you, you fit these models. Uh, for example, we have some novel ways of doing that. We use aggregated residual sum of squares. We use the geometric smoother uh, dynamic uh, robust estimates. And then I'll show you how we do uh, long term interval predictions. Uh, so these methods are uh, applicable uh, in general, but I will be a little bit more specific when applying and we'll, we'll see what happens to it when we apply this to Indian COVID data for the period March 14th when it hit uh, India uh, and uh, November 30th. So on the SIR st stands for susceptible, infected and removed and removed can uh, include recovered or deceased in the original models uh, it was only recovered but now we have counts for the deceased also and this was a model that was uh, uh, initiated by Kermak and McKendrick almost a century ago uh, uh, and it's a very important model in epidemiology and so along with several variations it has been reprinted as Kermak and McKendrick 1991 with uh, uh, additional uh, material by other other authors so it's a three-part paper so it's a very important uh, landmark paper in, in this area. So the assumptions for the SIRD model, uh, the basic assumptions are that the epidemic uh, propagates uh, in a closed, completely susceptible, well-mixed population of a constant size. There is no demographic change, so we assume that there is no net births or deaths during the course of the propagation. And then the propagation happens at constant rates of infection, recovery, and fatalities. So the following parameters are held constant in the regular SIR model. For us, they are constant only for each data window under modeling, where the window shift by a day, keeping the length fixed, and the parameters are re-estimated. So that's the variation that we are going to use. Uh, so the effective contact rate will be beta, the recovery rate will be nu, and the fatality rate will be uh, mu. So these are the three basic parameters of the SIRD model. Uh, SIRD uh, will be the cumulative uh, counts for the susceptible infected and, and recoveries and the D will be the fatalities. N is the total number of individuals. Usually it is normalized to one by dividing by the total. So that's how it uh, is uh, formulated. Uh, and the SIRD model uh, assumes that uh, these uh, sequences or these uh, functions, uh, they satisfy the following simultaneous differential equations. And of course, there is no randomness in this model. As you can see, it's a deterministic model. And of course, there are many variations in the, in the context of COVID-19. And there are a couple of references that uh, we have listed uh, 
the at the end of the uh, lecture uh, the, the progression uh, condition which means that the epidemic will will not stall will, will not stop but will continue to progress uh, if and only if the uh, the rate of infections is, is positive and one can check by using the uh, equations given in this previous slide that this happens if and only if this beta over nu plus nu is is greater than zero so uh, that is the uh, the condition on the three parameters for the infection to to progress now uh, this uh, is related to what is known as the uh, reproduction number so uh, let me show you how this number is related to the reproduction number now in, in general uh, for any epidemic there are three essential parameters that drive that ep epidemic whereas tau c and d tau is the transmissibility parameter that's the probability of infection given contact between a susceptible and an infected individual what is the probability that uh, this individual would be infected and then there is the average rate of contact c between susceptible and infected individuals so the more the uh, uh, infected individuals move around uh, they are they you know there's more chance of of uh, getting other people infected and then the duration of the infectiousness so as long as the the person who is infected you know it can he or she can infect other people so that's the duration d the basic reproduction number r0 that's a standard notation in, in this literature is the expected number of secondary cases produced by a single infection in a completely susceptible population so this number is a dimensionless quantity and it's proportional to tau times c times d so these are the three parameters which determine the what is known as the reproduction number in an epidemic so this is a general framework this is a general kind of definition and for different models this r0 takes different uh, uh, meanings or different different shapes in the sird model tau times c is equal to beta and d is one over nu plus nu and hence the r0 is beta over nu plus nu. so the, the constant uh, uh, that we had encountered earlier in this slide uh, where we say this is the this is the condition for the epidemic to progress that number turns out to be nothing but the reproduction number in the sird model uh, and hence uh, this is the uh, importance of the reproduction number which you can see in many uh, different uh, uh, public uh, documents or, or, or discussions everybody talks about the reproduction number so this reproduction number in the sird model is related to beta over uh, nu plus nu is exactly equal to that and uh, hence uh, there is always concern if the reproduction number is greater than one then the epidemic actually progresses and the intensity of the progress depends on the you know the higher the value of r0 from you know, compared to one uh, the progression is more and more uh, intense so its estimation is related to the estimation of beta mu and nu because of equation three uh, so if i can estimate these three parameters i can estimate the reproduction number uh, for other models, the definition and interpretation and estimates of R0 is necessarily much more involved. I we have given you a very simple setup where uh, we have related the reproduction number to the SIRD model, how it behaves or uh, what it is for the, this particular model. For other models, these definitions are much, much more involved. There are actually more than one definition of the reproduction number. And there's a very nice article by Van Rish in 2017 who explains uh, there's many other models and many other definitions of reproduction number and their interpretations. Uh, now, uh, there will be uh, different factors uh, influencing the model uh, in general. So as the, uh, for example, the time, so if the model parameters should evolve over time. So for us, it's not a deterministic model. And uh, also the more people get infected, they, uh, you know, things change. Uh, so the time has an important uh, aspect and the, more, the parameters should also involve over time. So that's our um, basic, uh, that's our basic uh, message that it should depend on time. And the, uh, it also depends on the regions. For example, India is made up of several states and union territories. And for different regions, uh, the data plots show significant regional variation. And then there is this issue of national versus local. So an SIRD model, dynamic or otherwise, for the national data is not appropriate for local prediction. So if I uh, look at the national data and try to uh, predict or estimate parameters and then try to implement those uh, predictions or those estimates uh, 
in the local level, that's not going to work. So one has to do a regional kind of uh, analysis. Uh, data at the level of even smaller administrative regions uh, will be more informative, but these are not easily available. And then finally, there is a special spatial temporal dependence. So different regions could influence each other. Uh, and so we may be able to borrow strength from connected uh, regions for an improved analysis. So in this case, connected does not necessarily mean geographically connected. Connected, for example, could be that the metro cities are more connected than the other cities among themselves because of, of uh, you know, uh, migration of people from uh, you know, or because of the uh, airline travel or, or train travel among the metro cities. So here, uh, spatial temporal de uh, dependence takes a, a very different meaning than from being geographically connected. And there, are, of course, uh, there are further factors which uh, uh, influences uh, an epidemic like uh, like COVID. Uh, for example, we have locks, unlocks, and zoning and travel restrictions. We have all encountered these things in India. And there is migration. There has been a lot of talk about uh, what happened, uh, how the uh, spread of the epidemic, whether it was affected by the migration that, that happened in mid uh, June, July, around that time. And then the level of compliance with the guidelines So different states, different regions have um, have tried to implement uh, the best to their best possible uh, ability these uh, uh, locks or zoning uh, or travel restrictions. But the compliance from the public and other authorities uh, has not been uniform. So these also affect the uh, the progression of the epidemic. And then uh, there is also this uh, issue about uh, what kind of uh, reporting is done. For example, it's believed that there is a significant underreporting of, of cases, uh, number of infected people or of deaths. There is a delayed reporting and then there is change in the methodology of reporting in the uh, so what constitutes uh, a death by COVID and what it does not. So there was a lot of controversy about that. You must have read some of these in the newspapers. Uh, and then there are uh, clinical issues and so uh, that changes over time uh, in the methods of for case identification and the method of sample collection and the laboratory testing procedures so there are so many different kinds of covid tests now for example available uh, so these are also uh, add to the uh, variations in the in the data over, over time so there has been attempts to incorporate at least some of these factors um, but even though we have not not, not done that in in this particular work. Uh, so we can see, for example, uh, the paper by Anshumali and Meher and Kotwal. So the list of references is given at the end. Uh, we, uh, on the other hand, take a parsimonious approach. Uh, we do not try to uh, model all of these uh, uh, all of these uh, factors that that could influence the progression of the of the epidemic. So there will be simply too many parameters. Uh, so what we do is we continue with the SIRD model that I have explained uh, or given a very brief account of earlier. But uh, instead of having these parameters beta, mu and nu being fixed over time, uh, we let the uh, we let the model or the um, the epidemic uh, model uh, evolve adaptively with the temporal data in each region. So first of all, uh, we do the modeling uh, region wise. And secondly, these parameters are not going to be fixed for us. They are going to evolve adaptively uh, over time. And due to estimation based on shifting of windows, the parameters are able to adapt to changes in the underlying observable as well as latent factors. So in a broad sense, our approach is akin to non-parametric curve fitting. So we have these curves for uh, our daily data on uh, uh, infections uh, and, and deaths and, and recoveries. And we would like to fit a non-parametric curve to that. And in the process, we will also estimate the parameters beta mu nu and also the reproduction number. Uh, the data uh, source has been the volunteer driven crowdsource database, uh, which is uh, more or less standard now, uh, especially for the for Indian data. This data is updated daily. And as you pointed out earlier, there are issues with this data. For example, there could be missing values, negative counts, delay in updating, and, and change in the in the reporting format. Uh, so we did some preliminary consistency checks and cleaning uh, 
and one has to note that the date is obtained only at discrete points, even though that's the original model is a is a is a differential equation model. So it's con you know, it's a continuous time model, and of course uh, one has to be uh, one has to match these these two issues up. So for any choice of the values of beta nu and mu, this ID SIRD differential equation can be solved numerically because we have data only at uh, at, at discrete time points. And there are softwares uh, or programs available to do this. So here is the uh, distribution of daily infection for the 12 first uh, hit regions. Uh, so March 14 was the first, you know, the day when COVID was uh, uh, identified in, in India. And these are the first 12 states which, uh, you know, which uh, were hit by COVID. And this is where they stand now. And you can see that the significant regional variation uh, in the uh, in the in the counts. Uh, so we should mention something about the software and the hardware on in which we had implemented uh, all this the the method that I'm going to uh, mention. So the implementation was done on the software R. The library dissolve was used to uh, solve the differential equations numerically. The entire program takes a few minutes and. Uh, you can refer to all the details of the of the analysis uh, in our archive paper, uh, which comes with a supplementary file where all the detailed plots and figures are given uh, until uh, August 31, 2020. And for the updates beyond this time point are available in this uh, uh, link to Professor Bhattacharjee's uh, website. All right, so. Uh, one important uh, novel or uh, variation that we have we have uh, done is that we have implemented this IRD model and its variation uh, by we uh, all those that we came out across in the literature they use the what is known as the residual sum of squares of the number of infections. However, for COVID-19 we have information on recoveries and fatalities also. And so what we did was instead of using only the residual sum of squares for the infections. We use the aggregated residual sum of squares for infections, recoveries, and, and fatalities, and that changes drastically the the quality of the fit and the quality of the of the estimates that we have seen from from our experience. So the temporal estimates of beta mu nu. Note that now because uh, we are going to allow uh, evolution over time, these three parameters are going to be estimated uh, over time. So the, uh, they are going to be time varying estimates. Uh, so only the most recent past seven days data is used to estimate the parameters with the ob obvious updation of the initial condition as time as time progresses. Uh, these estimates are, are then smooth, leading to robust final estimates. Thus at time point T, these are obtained by minimizing the sum of squares given in equation four, where, I ha where the hats are the observed values of infections, recoveries and fatalities. And then we, uh, we devise a grid and the values of IT, RT and DT for given parameter choices over a grid are obtained by numerically solving the differential equations. So there is an optimization procedure over the grid, uh, uh, which eventually gives us the, the best parameter values of beta mu and nu. Uh, once you obtain those, then we choose a weighted average over the last seven days estimates with geometrically decreasing weights. Other smoothness could also be used by trial and error. We, we arrived at these estimates, which seem to be the, uh, you know, doing a reasonably good job. So we thus arrive at our robust final estimates, a beta t, nu t, and nu t at the time point t. Uh, it's important to realize that this these uh, set of estimates will keep on changing. So it's like uh, because it's happening over a movie window of seven past days. So at any time point t, uh, these are the estimates of the uh, of the are the current estimates of the of the three parameters. Now recall the relation between beta mu nu and r zero, uh, the reproduction number. So our initial estimate for R0, once we have derived beta mu and nu, is simply beta by mu plus nu at the time point t. Now, uh, once you uh, do this, and this turns out to be a spiky estimate, and we robustify this estimate by, for example, taking a median of moving window of seven past values to obtain a model for the epidemic, and hence this equation is really not sacrosanct. Now, uh, once you obtain these estimates, then the point estimates are uh, obtained by solving this uh, SIRD model numerically, and that's how you uh, we do it. So we can also calculate the case step ahead predicted values. And while solving this, we found it extremely useful to add the obvious but crucial constraint 
R plus D is less than or equal to I T. Uh, recall uh, there is no random com component at any time point T. We can consider the past values and also cons consider the corresponding accumulated predicted values and we can consider the mm, empirical distribution of the mm, error values uh, I T minus I hat T and then uh, use these uh, this empirical distribution to come up with our predictive interval by uh, taking the quantiles of this uh, empirical distribution at the lower and the upper quantiles <laughs> and the same idea could be used for other variables also note that the width of the band remains same for the k step ahead predicted values as there is uh, no updated empirical distribution so uh, a quick view this is what ha was happened to the so last five four months of reproduction number and you can see that this was in um, august and then september and then october and and then november and you can see there's a shrinking of the of the range of values of of r0 and there's also the uh, you know the change in the order of the uh, 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 with respect to the highest and the lowest and, and so on. Uh, and this is how the changing uh, the reproduction number distribution changes over the last uh, over time. Uh, and uh, these are this is one sample plot from uh, from our uh, paper. Uh, and a predictive bands for uh, for daily count for Delhi, which is a very worrisome uh, uh, state uh, as far as the uh, number of infections is concerned. And this is the predicted counts up to one year starting from November 30th. And you can see, for example, the, uh, the, the curve for West Bengal is sharply increasing. So that's a really uh, what you call, uh, uh, that's a, that's a real seriously serious concern. And uh, then, uh, for example, Kerala is also uh, you know, sharply increasing. Delhi, which was not doing too well, which is increasing uh, recently, but seems to be uh, still increasing uh, significantly. Uh, some of the other states are uh, look to be flattening the curve. So for different regions, the the progression has been quite uh, quite different. <laughs> All right. So here is a quick uh, list of references. And one can always go to, to our article for all the other details. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Bogger, for your interesting talk. And we have a few seconds for, for questions. If somebody has uh, uh, has a question or comments, so please ask. If not, I am pretty sure that uh, you can expect no, many. Please raise many. your hand, it is. Yes, OK. Oh, please. Oh, no. So if not, I would like to thank Professor Bose once more. And I, as I told you, you can expect many, many, many uh, contacts with people because this, this topic is extremely hot and very interesting from also mathematical point of view. And uh, these models are uh, the, the, the subject of, of big discussion. So thank you very much for your presentation and I am closing this session uh, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much thank all you. participants thank for, for thank coming. You. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.